Welcome to the Something Random Podcast. Ah, ah, ah. Where sometimes we talk about movies. Sometimes we talk about television. <laughs> but we always talk about something random. I am your host, <laughs> Count Charles Joseph Kelly. And I am Michael C. Macbeth. And I'm a ghost. <laughs> Good evening. <laughs> I'm a vampire. Wait, I was a vampire. <laughs> oh, shit. They are both vampires. <laughs> I meant we are both vampires. There can be two vampires. I am actually a zombie vampire. <laughs> I'm a zombie that drinks the blood from Transvan. And, and with But my name is Joel. And, oh my and with us this week, once again, we have the great Seth. Tchaikovsky, you hey. Seth, welcome. Hey, thanks thanks for having me. No. <laughs> <laughs> He's not a monster. That is the scariest voice I've he ever He wandered heard. in here by himself. <laughs> oh my god. I'm, it was a good bit. It was, a, it was fun. <laughs> it's it's a, a bad. It's a good yeah. bath. It's, it's such a good bath. Hi, guys. Hey, how are What's you doing, that? Seth? Oh. I'm good. Good to be here again. This is I kind know. of just like fun happenstance. I yeah, know. so you guys, we were about to, you know, do the podcast, and I was like, dude, you guys, Seth's upstairs. Should we just have him come down? And they were like, okay. So we were just like, let's do a six degrees of separation. What? Why not just do the whole episode? That's I was washing my whites. I was washing Ooh. them. Hey, I got a joke for you. What does Snoop Dogg use to wash his whites? What? Bleach. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> luckily, I bought this giant, like, wooden cane with, like, an arch around it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I'm going to use it right now. Let's just pull jo- uh, Joel <laughs> right off. <laughs> yep, the slide was a little... Yow! <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, don't look at me like we're, I'm talking. I'm pretending I'm not really on stage. Oh, we're, we're getting goofy here, we're guys. Really I goofy. think we should we should go uh, right into it. Um, you asked me how I was what? doing. You know, I'm I'm doing well. <laughs> you asked me how I was doing. Can we yeah, go I back did. to that? Yeah, let's, let's talk about. Can we how talk are you? about me? Please? I'm good. I bought these I bought these shoes I'm wearing at a uh, drugstore. <laughs> what drugstore? Okay. <laughs> let's let's go. Walgreens or Rite Aid? Honestly, it was actually it was a Rite Aid. It was a Rite Aid. That's where the horror. But I didn't. You know, I don't know what they laced them with. But I've been tripping all day. Oh, no. <laughs> You're welcome. Oh, America. Excellent. That's the play the good. He's got some jokes. Uh, what the? I'm doing pretty good. Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're doing okay? You doing all right? I'm, I'm sure. Doing well. You're sure? Doing you're well. Sure? Yeah, traveling. I fly to Alaska uh, tomorrow. Really? For work. Yeah. That's the first time in Alaska. So wow. that'll be cool. How exciting. See a glacier, a mountain, probably. That'll yeah. be neat. Why Alaska? So I work for an online school, and we work with every state in our great nation. Mm-hmm. And um, Alaska is a state. Alaska is a state. That makes yeah. sure that makes sense. is. And so we're gonna. I'm gonna fly up there and present our curriculum and okay. <laughs> see the state. Hopefully, I'll see a moose. Oh God! We've got oh, some. Yeah. We got are some you, moose here too. I you mean, get, are you Colorado. gonna wear a Halloween costume? Blah. Yeah, probably. Blah. <laughs> You could dress like an Eskimo. <laughs> you're you're doing this like presentation. You're dressed up like like Dracula. You're like, and here is uh, our <laughs> curriculum that you yeah. can get. You don't even sound like it's just no. It'll be, uh, yeah, it'll be just like, come over here, <laughs> learn medical terminology. Ah <laughs> uh, uh, uh. I, I only know one count, and it was the one from Sesame <laughs> Street. <laughs> Sesame Street. That's a good one. That's good. One one voice. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> What oh, the hell Lord. have you guys been watching this week? Sesame Street. No, um, <laughs> <laughs> I wish. I well, I watched the uh, opening to the new season of Brooklyn Nine Nine, and I'm stoked. I still need to finish season two. I'm I'm about halfway done. Uh, I got to the point where they're back in New York because uh, the first like four episodes they weren't right. Uh, Four yes, five, that yeah. was the witness protection one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I love about the show, aside from the fact that it's Andy Samberg and there are so many brilliant actors and aspects to the show, mm-hmm. is that every season they start with something epic where you, you think, okay, well, there's no other kooky situations these cops could get into. But already Andy Samberg's character, Peralta, has gone undercover with the mob for 
it and that was the ending of the season and then the beginning of the season was was him concluding his his undercover stuff with the mob um another one they went into witness protection because a mobster was after them mm-hmm. um and so they moved to florida and took on completely different identities and they had a few episodes just devoted to that and it was hilarious right. and so yeah spoiler alert but uh they <laughs> do, do you want me to not say <laughs> no that's no, a, that's a good that's a good don't uh, say it. i that's don't a good egg okay. to yeah 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 they start with they they really do they start with with good unique situations that you're like okay well clearly they're gonna find a way out of this but how yeah i mean it's i i think that this is one of those shows where you don't go like how dare you tell me the spoilers of brooklyn 99 yeah. i've been looking for this show for years um <laughs> so the the lead detective i was watching both jack horseman uh the lead uh the captain holt character who has a corgi uh, in the show by the way yes uh, of course I'm really obsessed. Dog. what's yeah. the what's the corgi's yeah. name again cheddar cheddar cheddar, cheddar the corgi. The corgi. He, he's also in uh, bojack horseman <laughs> as the mayor named woodchuck uh he's he plays what's his name he, woodchuck woodchuck beaverton is the name and he plays a giant beaver oh excellent um does he use the same monotone voice or is he expressive but no woodchuck is his nickname his actual name is wood charles <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that's brilliant so, brilliant absolutely brilliant uh, i am in such extreme pain right now joel what have you been watching <laughs> <laughs> uh, i was just gonna bring up something that i i watch every week but i've never talked about it before and that's Penn and teller fool us which is uh i'm sure most of you are familiar with Penn and teller if you're not they're magicians they have a show where it's they sit as audience members they have people come out, magicians come out and do a trick. And if they can f- fool Penn and Teller, as in th- they don't know how the trick is done, mm-hmm. they win and they get to uh, perform in their show. I think it's just for one night and they get a trophy. I don't know if there's a cash prize. Because they're performing isn't... in Vegas, right? right. This is the right. Yeah, Penn and Teller has a long running uh, show in Las Vegas. And um, it's awesome. There's w- one or two foolers per episode. They have about six people per show right it's just awesome because i i really like uh magic like big magic and i also like sleight of hand up close stuff that's what that's my favorite thing to watch because it's like how do they do that kind of right. stuff even though you know that like something is just hidden but it's like they're so good at it anyway i love it so if you haven't seen or heard uh of Penn and teller's fool us check that out it is good joel showed me a couple he uh he showed me this one guy who um he didn't even call himself a musician. He was just a card technician, but he was blind. A card mechanic. A card mechanic. Yeah. That's right. Ooh. So it was awesome. It was really impressive. And he's blind. He's blind. That is impressive. And he was able to have Penn and Teller shuffle the deck and mix it all up and everything. And then he dealt. They said, how many? He said, how many hands of poker should I deal? And they said, uh, six. And he goes, okay. And how many should I do? And like he was asking them the questions. And he, he was able to deal Teller four kings. Like after they shuffled it, I was like, "How in the hell did he do that?" Yeah. So is yeah. is it like the Prestige where he's playing this character who's blind and, and no, no, it's, no, it's, he's, it's, no, he's totally actually, immersive no, in blind. his life? No, okay, yeah. I it, mean, it, but but would you know that if he were uh, really good at faking? Uh, maybe you would if you knew the truth about your life. <laughs> anyway, that's what I looked at. I'm also <laughs> I wanted something to, say, to look into the truth. I also yeah. wanted to say that I'm excited about uh SNL has a couple new cast members. I haven't seen the new ones yet, but yes, I'm excited about that. What about you? What'd you watch? Uh I haven't watched very much. I'm trying to let my brain kind of think of its own things right now, but I have been listening to a lot of podcasts and I kind of wanted to talk to Seth about that a little bit to see Seth, what have you been listening to podcast wise lately? For sure. Um, the something random podcast. I have, I'm, I am, uh, I am I'm one of, of your over followers. those guys. Well, I'm one of the followers of the something random podcast. One of the three dorks. One of the three, one of the, th- one third of the three. Um, one time I gave up. <laughs> our, <laughs> anyway it was uh yeah so i'm on the road all the time so i listen to uh podcast uh other than like come um, kind of some uh news political based podcast i listened and i'm really intrigued in a true crime podcast called sword and scale love sword and scale yeah, yeah. it's awesome man and like totally fucked up 
Yeah. <laughs> so I love true fuck. crime. Man. Yeah, well, and like the biggest thing is like the guy who does it. He's got a. He's got a. He's. He has a great way of storytelling, mm-hmm. and it's, it's very, very well produced. Sometimes a little overproduced for my my taste, but um, he the way he tells his stories. I I, I know his first name's Mike, but I, I don't know his last name. But he's great. He he's great. And he, they're seas, they're in season four right now. And if you want to check it out, if you want to dive right into how kind of messed up people are in the world, mm-hmm. watch number episode number eighty two. Which one is that? Is that the nine one one? Wait, no, that's the one you you said ninety two. Ninety two. Sorry, ninety two. Which one is it? It's the serial Edmund killer. Kemper. Oh right, that's the one you were talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Boo! This guy, he likes the dead ladies. It's the uh, yeah yeah. Uh, you gotta so, get that D. It dead ladies. <laughs> you know, I've been I've been thinking about um like I really love the true crime idea yeah. of podcasts. I've been thinking about starting one of myself because there's this, like this really interesting crime that I've been like following. It's k- kind of a few years back. Um, it was based out of Denver. There's like some weird conspiracy theories. What? About that. Joel and I were talking about this. We were talking about it. It's actually really fascinating. Yeah. So uh, I think, you know, we're going to do some, some research into that. We're going to try to see if that's something. That's that, awesome. Yeah. Well, okay, so we're talking, we were stay talking, tuned. Yeah. We were talking about talking about it on the podcast, but it would take up the whole podcast. Yeah, literally. So. We don't want to like, cross our audience over that <laughs> this is not going to turn into a true crime pro- yeah. podcast don't worry but or maybe um, it will uh i wanted to say maybe this is the crime it is <laughs> <laughs> there's an episode i can't remember which number it is but there's one where he's interviewing a former 911 dispatch yes have you heard that one yes it's awesome it's so freaky they play actual calls and there's people that go you're gonna have to stop screaming or i'm gonna hang up on you and then they hang up and the person dies yeah like there are people you are kidding me no no no. they were playing real calls and oh yeah operators there's uh, there's a there's most of the time operators are really great i mean thank thank god for 911 operators yeah and i know a few and they they really take it seriously sure yeah yeah, i've known a couple too but this is just like the very few the bad the bad apples which always are the ones that are most magnified right Right. and that's why it was so scary because it's like this is real stuff Uh, true crime yeah like you know that stuff always fascinates me because it's freaky and and i think i think uh, his tagline the sword and scales tagline is um to let you know that the true monsters are actually out there you know and he always tells everybody at the very end of every podcast to be safe the monsters. Yeah, there's some. <laughs> and, and honestly, not yeah, to get no. political here, but there's a very strong argument for capital punishment after watching a lot of these yeah. or listening to a lot of these. I believe it. That's yeah. That's a very long discussion that is not. We're not going <laughs> to talk about today. <laughs> <laughs> let's make jokes. Oh yeah, let's talk about murder, guys. <laughs> um, so... I murdered a wasp that stung me yesterday. Oh, that... <gasps> I, go ahead. I, Seth hates wasps. I fucking hate wasps. Yeah. <laughs> do you now? Are you like me? Do you hate all flying things with stingers or just wasps? I'm not a fan. Strictly, I'm not a fan of be- people say, "Oh, bees pollinate and they make honey." And they also sting the shit and out of you. And they die. Blah. Guess what? They're fuckers. <laughs> wasps um, will sting the shit out of you. Bees are that's fun the thing. And fun. But here's the thing. No, there's a meme going around where it says like it says it shows a picture of the bee. It says pollinates things and helps nature be nature and <laughs> let's create some honey with our dead bodies in it blah 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 right <laughs> yes. but then an unbelie- underneath it just says wasps just assholes <laughs> <laughs> because they are Counter. they're I, fucking the worst they're attracted to trash and they don't serve any good other that's why than they're to that's why they hang around so Michael <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that's trash that's it's trash not- that was, that was low. It seems like every year okay. we get the grill out at the beginning of summertime, there's always a wasp nest in it. Always. And because they're attracted, always the one to, they're, they're attracted to that, that like meat. You know what I mean? So they like the meats. Those... They do like the meats. They like the meats. <laughs> so Here comes a fucking wasp. Anyway, so <laughs> I, I'm going to the I'm going to uh, I'm going down to tailgate with some buddies for the Bronco game, and I'm wearing a jersey and it has orange on it. And I guess they're attracted to that. But this thing's it came up and it stung me right underneath here. Oh, right yeah, here. I see it. Jeez, it's like it's raised. I can see that from here. Ooh. Yeah, it's stupid. Well, it was dumb. That. And I, FYI, we're at a very, very large table, so the fact that we can see it from here is, is pretty impressive. <laughs> yeah, I can't see what color Seth's eyes are, but I can see the wasps. <laughs> yeah, see, you guys get it. 
And then my buddy TJ, he like literally Miyagi'd it out of the air. Miyagi. It like, it flew out and he took his hat off and he goes, hey, that's it! <laughs> TJ, slick and blue. I love when I see Michael around bees or other flying yellow objects because it becomes like a, a Looney Tunes cartoon where you see his body disappear so quickly and no. like this this trail maybe like an arm with like a sign behind it that says fuck bees um, <laughs> like Wile E. Coyote yeah like Wile E. Coyote and he runs out of there so quickly to get so far away from that flying yellow creature I, yeah he hates allergic? him no, no, no. It's, <laughs> it's completely irrational. I have no reason. I don't have an experience like that. I mean, like one time I was stung by, I think, a yellow jacket and I was I was just jumping on the trampoline. And then same thing. I was just like lying on my back on the trampoline. And then I heard a buzzing sound and then it stopped. And so I I went inside and sat down and apparently it had gone up my sweatpants. Um, yeah. And so I got stung somewhere in the leg and um and that was freaky. And then it was inside, too. So See, your irrational better. fear is like my irrational fear of spiders. I got arachnophobia from watching the movie Arachnophobia. <laughs> Dude, I love that movie, but I understand. Isn't, okay, so I'm, I'm thinking back. Is, is, it, is it Jeff? Jeff Daniels. Jeff, Jeff Daniels is yep. in it, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. It's a goddamn general. That's what he says. Oh my gosh. And John Goodman is John the exterminator. Goodman, yeah. Ooh, See, it wasn't, it wasn't a movie for me. I Rock um, and roll. <laughs> I went to this uh, this place... Um, maybe, maybe you've heard of it. Maybe not. Um, the library <laughs> and, <laughs> oh, uh, oh, they have books. They have, yeah. They have audio books. Yeah. It's basically, <laughs> you can it's get basically a like the internet on a tree. Yeah. Um, the Dewey you're kidding. System. Yeah. It's so, so you, crazy. So you went there. So I went to this library place and, and I got, I checked out this book and it was literally all about <laughs> the worst insect stories. Or, or worst bug stories. So there were Black Widow spider stories. There were, um, there were bee stories, and like all of the, all of the creatures that could possibly scare you. It, it was telling you the worst happenings that ever happened <laughs> with these. And it was it was terrifying. That's scary stuff yeah. too. Because, like, yeah. have you have you guys ever seen a spider or a scorpion eat? It's fucking yes. nightmare. Only fuel. like on videos. No, like, the guy. Uh, I've never seen one in person. They like, like like close up, like how their mouths have their own mouths, yeah. and it's like just like <laughs> like multiple mouths, like devouring some yeah. creature, like an alien. The oh my god! It, <laughs> I don't understand how people can go. Oh, it's a spider. So cute. Because <laughs> that shit scares me. Well, not only that, the fact that they feed off blood. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like a bubble plasma. Fuck this. All right. <laughs> let's, let's, this, is, this is our really spooky, human, scary episode. This is, guys, spooky, this is so spooky, scary. spooky okay. and scary. I don't know if Let I'm going to make it this. Through. Let me ask you this. This is like off topic, but uh, do you guys have any like real phobias? Yeah, that's my... I am, that, I am are you literally like... No, like if I see a spider, I, I get... I, I do you freeze or do you I freeze? Run? No, no, I freeze. I I get to the point where like if I if I think about a spider for for long enough, it freaks me out just thinking about it. And I know like brain wise that it's completely irrational and it's something that I have to deal with. Mm-hmm. Um, but I can't. I cannot. I cannot do it. It's it's too he, too much. He for me. cannot even. <laughs> I, I my, my thing with spiders is I'm not I'm not afraid of them. If like if I see one. They can startle me. If one crawls up next to me and touches my hand or something, I'll jump. But I'm not scared of them. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. No, and and, yeah. and usually same with me. Because it's like, oh, it's a spider. But it's for so bees, okay. like I get nervous and I run away. But if if I were in a in a fight or flight type scenario where I was cornered or <laughs> right. whatever, yeah. for whatever reason I had to stay still, or if I was driving, I would be able to master myself mm-hmm. in those particular situations. And so I, I wouldn't necessarily call it a phobia. Mm-hmm. So let's go back to saying how you master yourself. <laughs> He's a because I think I think there's some good quality humor here oh. where we can. Like, I don't know. Low hanging. This is like yeah. I was in the car. Low. low. I, I master, was in the car. I mastered myself with the low hanging fruit. I was I was Gosh. in the car. I was I saw a bee. It was late night. I saw a bee in my car, and I just I mastered myself, man. <laughs> It was, a, it was just like, I what, just... Would, would steal myself or harden myself be better? <laughs> oh. I hardened and I mastered myself. 
I have. Uh, a, I feel I like there's always there's weird no, there's no sexual way. references when I come on your show. Oh, for sure. <laughs> there's no other way I could have like said that that wouldn't I think be taken great. sexually. I Thank understood you. what you. Said. I was picking up what you were putting down. See, I was too. But then you see Joel and I in the corner going, <laughs> "He's a master." <laughs> I did. I made a face. I went. Yeah. <laughs> do you guys like jump scare? Do you like being jump scared? I love jump scares. Yes, yeah, that's do the you difference. Like, like from other people getting jump scared. Uh, in real life, I'm more okay with it as long as it's somebody that I know and I can punch him without like <laughs> going to jail. <laughs> do you go? Do you go violent? Do you See, get mad? It's it's when I'm scared. It's fight or flight, and it's the first one. <laughs> yeah. Is it's for me? Like I will like tense up and I'm gonna punch something. Like if I'm like really really afraid, I go for the fight first, and it's just a response. <laughs> Uh, knee jerk his yeah. his black belt training kicks in yeah there's yeah. like that video on the internet where the guy pops out of the trash can oh, and gets he jacked b- punches him right in the face i would do that shit and that's why i i oh man those those pranks are the best oh man i don't so much like in-person jump scares unless i'm in like a haunted house or a corn maze you know uh, i'll laugh at it later at the time i'm just too. like eh. It's not for me. That that kind of I like yeah, endorphin I love, I love rush. Them. I like being scared. I, I me think too. that if I got if I got used to it, like how I've done with hot food, like I'm addicted to hot food now. I could probably get addicted to jump scares. So okay. so no more cold cut Jambalaya. sandwiches for you. See, we're gonna have we're gonna have uh, Doctor Angela on the podcast next week. Seriously? Okay. Um, yeah, that's, that's awesome. awesome. So we're gonna have Doctor Angela. I want to talk to her about the the psychology behind jump scares. Good idea. I think that that'd be kind of good for. So, yeah, I I think that's awesome. I, I mean, that's something that's totally fascinating to me because right. I get a kick out of being jump scared, mm-hmm. and I also get a kick at scare out of scaring people. Yeah. So this one time, Joel, it was a long time ago, probably about oh, eight no. years ago, yeah. and I, my girlfriend at the time, uh, I was like, I'm gonna scare, I'm gonna scare her, and so she's taking a shower. And she's singing. Oh God, yes, okay. And so I tell Jolene and Joel, I was like, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go scare. Her. And so I go into, I go into the bathroom and I, I drop trowel, but I keep, I keep my undies on and I keep my shirt down, so it just looks like I'm, I'm digging a, dropping a deuce, you know. And she's in there, but she's, she's still yes. taking a shower. She takes a shower and for singing. probably. 25 minutes. Oh my just God. Sitting, just this sitting is there devotion in your to undies the scare. Yeah. on the and toilet. And I'm like this. I was like, this is going to be great. It's going to be great. And, and, and then she, so you got to hear jo- Joel's reaction after this, but she pulls open the curtain, right? And um, she's like, kind of like, she's like spraying the side with that, like, that the soap scum remover, you know, right. she's being a good... Uh, she's pulling your hair off the wall, she yep, said. Uh-huh. And, yeah, uh-huh. And she didn't notice me at first. And she sees me, and she just loses her shit. To the point where, like, she's laughing and crying. Because she's so scared. But she's laughing, too, because... There's this guy, this giant Pollock sitting next to her. <laughs> Making the, the oddest face. You can't see the face he, he made. But, oh my god. So I, that happened, and it was awesome. Well, well uh, to add on to that, Jill, he told Jalen and I that he was going to go do this, and 20 minutes have gone by, At so least. we're like, I guess he decided not to, and maybe he went to bed or something, because he never came back out. But he was sitting on the toilet the whole time, and his <laughs> legs fell asleep, did, so he couldn't did. walk. <laughs> so like, couldn't, I'm couldn't stuck walk. here, honey. I couldn't. I couldn't and get he up. came out of the bathroom. He was. I don't know if I've ever seen you laugh that hard. He was laughing so hard, he was completely red. He, I, he wasn't breathing. <laughs> I was like, and his legs I was like, working. Seth, should I Heimlich you? And he was practically rolling on the ground. So uh, let's can rein it in here yes. and finish up. Uh, so that perfectly uh, segues into uh, what we're doing this month. Uh, we're doing spooky, scary stories, and we're asking everybody who's jumping on. <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it. You can't do it. You can't do it. <laughs> I don't know. That might be public domain. That's probably um, the spooky, scary skeleton song. It's not public domain. Oh, shoot. Um, Next time. So, uh, what, what, what we go? We've got um, what's a, what's another word for sp- spooky? Another word creepy. for spooky? Cre- creepy, creepy, frightening. Uh, bones and ribs. <laughs> creepy, <laughs> frightening. <laughs> Sternum. Okay, that's that's the song. Um, anyways, uh, so. <laughs> uh, my uh, aunt, who tragically passed of breast cancer, she when uh, when she was alive, she told like our favorite me and my cousins. We would all gather around, and Aunt Linda would tell these awesome ghost stories, right? right. And a lot of the time, she would just pull them right out of her cuckoo. Um, so this one time, she sits down and she tells the story of this family. Who was uh, f- uh, this? This kid's dad was a pilot, 
and they had a two prop plane and um they're going down in these woods in washington and they crash and his this kid's parents die but he gets flung forward and he gets his uh arms cut off at the elbow and uh his legs cut off at the knee Ugh. well so in washington growing up uh people would always talk about these murders that happened when people would go um, camping Mm -hmm. and when they found the bodies their mouths were just their jaws were broken and their mouths were uh, jacked open like they uh, something was shoved into their mouth and they were suffocated to death Jesus yeah and so um, she told us the story and it freaked me out because I'm a sensitive cuss and um, so I'm I used to live in the western slope of Montrose. It's about uh, six hours away from uh, Fort Collins, give or mm-hmm. take. And um, we'd come and visit. And I was, you know, sleeping in the basement of my cousin's house. And um, part of the story that she told was that there was this like thumping noise when it when it came to yeah, this like kid. That. Yeah, <laughs> there was this thumping noise. Kind of, yeah, like 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 this bump. <laughs> Well, like that. Are anyway, we are we gonna do some ADR yeah. for that later? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, <laughs> Please proceed. In post. We'll do that in post. I know. I know some words. I know words. Anyway, so like. <laughs> oh, oh, strike it. Strike, strike it. it. We, strike. We've been around for we so we know we all the terms. All the terms. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> Please keep going. Uh, let's go. Let's go back to one on this story. Okay. <laughs> anyway, and uh, when they finally found this kid, um, he. He uh, had his stumps were gnawed off where he would like shove his stump into people's mouths and kill them and then rob them of their food. And oh and my stuff. gosh, yeah. it scared the scared the crap out Good of me. Good God, yeah, it scared the crap out of me. And uh, <laughs> so I'm laying in this 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 dark basement. How old are you when she's telling you 11, this? Okay. 10 or 11? And um, <laughs> what an ant, same yeah. age, same age as the the wasp attack, <laughs> dude. I mean, like, that was bad. a bad year for you, bad year. For year. Me. <laughs> Ugh, fucking wasps. <laughs> anyway, so I'm laying in the in this basement, and I hear this thumping noise, because part of the... Oh, my God. Yeah, part of the whole story was about these, like, uh, whenever the people that actually got away from this mur- these murder scenes, they heard an approaching <laughs> thumping noise, like someone Jesus walking God. around on, on stumps. I swear to God <laughs> that I was laying there. No one was playing a joke on me, but I heard this thumping noise that was specifically reminiscent to what my uh, aunt was saying wh- wh- how she told the story right Fuck. so i my 11 year old brain could not process that other than the fact that this kid is outside and he's about ready to kill me oh right my God. so i <laughs> i being the dumbass that i am at 11 i go upstairs because i can't sleep i'm start i start hy- hyperventilating and i go out they have a whole backyard and i go out there and and you went outside. I did. I did. I was stupid. And that's like the first rule of horror. Films. I'd have been pissing my pants. I did. I was scared, but I, I there was no way I was ever going to sleep or anything. Right. Okay. I even tried to wake up my cousin, and he was like, "Go back to bed. It's just a story. No, you're a stupid idiot." And so, like, I, <laughs> I I go out and I see this kid in the backyard. He has his arms and legs, but he good. He's like. He, I don't know what was going on because my 11 year old brain couldn't process it. But I see him, and they have one of those gate latches at the top where you have to flick the thing and unlock it. And he, he was like, he was trying to get the, the, the fence open. So he must have been cracked out or drunk or something. But he was rattling the the fence, and it was making that thumping noise. Oh my gosh! And I screamed, <laughs> and then he just climbed the fence and jumped over. But, he, I, like, looking back on it, I because 11 years old, I didn't know what drunk was or anything like right. that. And he must have been, like, totally messed up. But he saw me, and it was the scariest thing I've ever that's ever happened. It wasn't Gosh, really that scary. But in research, upon research, going back and, like, looking up that story, that actually did happen. No kidding. Yeah, there's some sort of murder that happened in Washington. In the, the woods of Washington, where people's jaws were broken and they were suffocated. Oh my god! I like that story a lot because it's it's the first part of the story is scary, and then your experience with the after telling of the story is also. Do you scary. guys have any experiences like? Does your anxiety ever affect you? Where you're like, oh my gosh, I'm in this situation, and then like for instance, uh, sometimes I will be almost asleep, right? And I'll look out the window and I'll be like, it'd be really fucking creepy. 
if uh, somebody <laughs> like some demon creature like looks through yes. my window. Yes, yes. Holy fuck! There's a demon creature that's gonna look at me through this window. You're mm-hmm. in like, like any your, moment. Your anxiety dictates that. Yeah, I've absolutely had experience. That happens like to that, me yeah. all the time, and I just find myself just like causing my own horror mm-hmm. when nothing's gonna happen. I'm just like, all right here we are there's gonna be some creature like gonna jump through this window right now i get that and uh, you know that the movie six cents you know came out and then if you there's a presence around you it gets really cold and you always see your breath and stuff that shit's happened to me yeah that's free in a too. really uh, warm room yeah and then seemingly it gets really cold and you can see your breath i've definitely experienced as, as somebody who is very um scientific brained and i i try to find the reality and the rational explanation yeah. hearing conversation like talking with our host last week carl pfeiffer uh k5 and, uh yeah talking carl with, pfeiffer photography yes <laughs> that's that's the one. Oh yeah I that's know, the guy yes. carl yes <laughs> good um, to see you um so but uh just talking with him about his experiences in the uh, the paranormal community is just so intriguing to hear these people who spend their time actually researching this. It's just it's so intriguing to find people or situations that aren't explainable. So there's mm-hmm. also weird occurrences too. Uh, I used to well, I still house it and dock it for these guys, but the the house they had before Joel can attest to this too. Yeah, I can't. But they have a basement and mm-hmm. it had a lock. On yes. the outside of the basement, mm-hmm. so oh, it was a chain no. lock too. Like, why what? would you? Why would you? As in, that? lock you were lock, who you would lock someone who downstairs? Would install that. Right. Why is that there? Oh. I made a scary snap story with that. Do you remember? Yes. <laughs> but why would you do that? That's, why? Like, what's? what's a, I mean, only because you can't like lock up an ant unless an animal can like learn how to open a door, which some animals can. Right. But or most a monster. Of the time, or monster. Spooky, scary <laughs> monster. Um, <laughs> Well, that's why it's freaky. It's like, were they planning for a zombie invasion? Right. What's going on? Why so, okay, so uh, we're gonna skip ahead really quick uh, no, to our to our uh, uh, six degrees of separation. Uh, so this one's gonna be kind of fun. Uh, we're gonna keep with the the the, the horror theme. Great. Um, now mine uh, is. Is what I consider a horror movie. This is debatable with some people. I've heard some people not call this a horror film. It's my favorite horror film, uh, Requiem for a Dream. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Oof. I'm going to go Jared Leto. Ash to ash. <laughs> I think we've done that every single podcast yes. as we started. So Jared Leto to Ron Perlman of Ooh, Hellboy one. fame. Yes. <clears throat> All okay. right. So, would you be so kind as to explain the rules? Of yeah, six of course. Uh, as always, the rules of six degrees of separation are: uh, you have to know the name of the actor, you have to know the name of the movie that they're in. Uh, Which you, that got us last week. Yes, it did. It got us so bad. They can be in television, but they have to be in the same episode together. Uh, so, or you can use another degree um, within that show. Right. If they were guest stars in different episodes, you can use the actual star of that show and crossover that right so um i was able to get this this in two steps uh i don't kind of good at it though yes um well i also for this one i had to use imdb um because it was kind of a last minute one that i had to find out but um yeah i think i think you guys are gonna have fun with this i think four minutes is sufficient um and that's where we're gonna go with uh do you guys uh want me to start the clock and get this going yes indeed cool so uh as we do this how long Four Four. minutes. Okay. Uh, And as we do this, we're going to take a brief word from our sponsors. Don't go away. Um, So, Jared Leto, the only thing I know of his is... Hey guys, it's your humble host, Charles, just checking in to see how things are going. Hey, I just wanted to touch base with you and see if you'd be interested in going... uh, uh, to the pumpkin patch with me? I uh, haven't carved any pumpkins in the last few years, and uh, is that something that you'd be interested in? So a couple quick things before we uh, before we get back to the podcast. Number one is we are going to be on Chasing the Mind next week. Uh, it's a show with our friends Dr. Angela and Dr. Stephanie. Um, they are also going to be on our show next week as well, which is going to be super fun. So next up is we're going to start doing our live stream again. And this is a post-recording live show on Mondays. Uh, we're going to try to hit around the 5 o'clock mark for the show it's going to look really, really nice. we got a, a bit of new equipment, so we can use all of our video equipment to do it as well. So that should be coming your way shortly. 
If you have any questions for the show, for us, uh, that you'd like us to answer about movies, television, theater, uh, m music, video games, really about anything, uh, you can uh, ask them on Facebook uh, at Something Random. Uh, you can find us on uh, Twitter at SMTNGRNDM, or you can just look up Something Random. You can find us on uh, uh, email, which is info at somethingrandommedia.com, or you can go to our website, which is somethingrandommedia.com, to have us answer your questions. If we don't answer your question here on the podcast, we're probably answering them on the live show. So uh, check that out. Uh, we have a lot of fun there, uh, and uh, yeah. We have a lot of things that we can't really talk about just yet. Some uh, some really exciting things going on behind the scenes that I can't wait to share with you guys. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to share with those with you in the next couple of weeks, but that really depends on contracts. So, uh, so without further ado, let's, uh, let's uh, get back to the show, and uh, I hope you're having a wonderful week, and I love you. Welcome to Chasing the Mind. I'm Dr. Stephanie Schwartz, kind of a science nerd. I'm Dr. Angela Johnson. I am nerd adjacent. The podcast that explores the art and science of the mind. People really like us answering questions about psychological topics. Yeah, whether it be issues they have in their lives or all manner of psychological disorders and concepts. How do our thoughts influence our sense of who we are? How do we impact the world around us? And can changing our minds change everything? We could even diagnose someone from a commercial. If you really want us to, I have some opinions about flow. I'll just tell you that right now. Okay, I like flow. We're going to have to throw down about flow. You can hear Dr. Angela and Dr. Stephanie at ChasingTheMind.com. New episodes every Friday. Jesus Christ, Boom. that was quick. That was awesome, bro. That was bro. 45 seconds. That is a well, record. I actually started thinking about it earlier. But okay. <laughs> but still, okay. that's good. Well done. I was like, I'm never going to get Ron you Perlman because I don't know him very well. But I was going with Pacific Rim. I was working with that. That was a good choice. Ooh. Pacific Rim and then Charlie Day. Sp is that Pacific his name? Rim? Charlie, what about ah, Charlie Day. Oh, my Gen God. He's General like... Rim. <laughs> that guy? Just, the guy from It's Pacific Always Sunny? Rim. Yeah, that guy. Uh, So... We're back. That's the record. That's the record we, of 45 Joel seconds. Joel killed that. Joel destroyed that. He murdered the, it. Uh, the, <laughs> the middle section was now officially longer than the amount of time it took for us to get to this moment here. That's amazing. Uh, you're welcome. So, so tell us, Joel. How did you get there? <laughs> All right. So Jared Leto is in Girl Interrupted with Whoopi Goldberg, baby. Oh, yeah. It's me, Whoopi. Whoopi Goldberg is in The Lion King with James Earl Jones. Mufasa. Ooh. Simba. Who is also in a little movie you may have heard of called Star Wars with Mark Hamill, who is in Sleepwalkers with Ron Perlman. And that's uh, a pretty solid. Yeah. Mike Drop. Did. So, so it just, it was weird. It just popped, popped in, in there. It really Sleepwalkers, did. Sleepwalkers, like no one thinks about that I know. at all. Well, I was trying to think of other Ron Perlman movies, and I was like, he's in Sleepwalkers, but I don't really know the Sleepwalkers actors very well, except for Mark Hamill and Glenn Shaddix, who's in a couple Tim Burton movies. Right. But... So so mine was, uh, it was two steps. Yeah, tell uh, So mine was, uh, Ron Perlman mm -hmm. uh, was in Driver with Ryan Gosling. Oh, yeah. Ooh. And Ryan Gosling is in the new Blade Runner movie. Yes. <laughs> okay. So yep. Driver and Runner, Driver. yeah. Yeah. Would have, would have worked. So, um... I think Seth has has the uh, quote unquote punishment movie. Oh yeah, for you. But you've already. I thought you'd already seen it. What movie? He has seen. Oh it. yeah, but watching it again would be marvelous. Oh, I think okay. I'm going to watch. See, it. See, here's the thing. I'm so down with watching this movie anyway. Okay, good. Okay, yeah. The punishment movie is Billy Zane <laughs> in the movie The Phantom. <laughs> yes, purple, purple suit spandex and all. Yeah, and that's it's the shadowed on muscles. Oh. <laughs> It's not even like like filled I don't, in. I, it might be actually. Okay. It might be. He might be buffed out. 
Like, remember, do you remember so the marvelous. old Flash from the nineties? Yes. Remember that? It was kind of <laughs> like that. That costume. So, um, fun fact about that: the the Flash, yeah, who was in that show, is the dad in the new yeah. Flash. Yeah. And I love. Oh. Growing, and you know who was the bad cool. guy? It was Mark Hamill in that? Yeah, he was the, the same trickster. character. He's the same and character. He's the trickster oh, the, the trickster. Yeah. yeah, that was so weird. That's like, wait, you were the Joker, and now you're same well, he universe, was trickster, but you're yeah, he trickster. Before, yeah, he, he was, was trickster before the Joker, but before the Joker. Yeah. So really? yeah, in the nineties, in the nineties. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah. That's awesome. So I grew up on there. So group. you can you can uh you can say officially that the Joker voice is actually based off the trickster voice. So show. Hey, oh. So I'm actually kind of excited to see this movie. it's been a it's been a hot minute. Uh same. So if you guys haven't seen this movie, it's a uh it's a superhero movie. And that's uh <laughs> That's kind of a loose interpretation of what the concept actually is. It's Billy Zane in a latex <laughs> outfit running around punching people. But and, with, and with he this wears, big rides ring a horse. that apparently what? has some power. That yes, he, never he rides a horse. Uses. He does ride a horse. He lives in a cave. He lives in a cave, and he has <laughs> two sidearms. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm the only one that's never seen it. Oh, oh my gosh. I think you should just watch it. For I think Wes is all watch it. Can we watch it tonight? I uh, yes. r- I've never Billy Zane. I can very rarely take seriously. Really, <laughs> the thing that I always go to when I think of Billy Zane, the first thing that pops in my head is probably the last thing anybody else thinks of. But he was in Adam Sandler's first movie called Going Overboard. Have you seen this? No. Never heard of and that. And he plays uh, some god, some Greek god, whose name I can't remember. But he plays a Greek god, and he has this big fake white beard, and he's outside, so the wind's blowing, and he keeps getting hair in his mouth, and he's like, <laughs> "That's all I can think of when somebody says Billy Zane." Hey, uh, not Titanic. No. <laughs> not, well, not even Back to the Future. <laughs> oh yeah. How would he change his clothes? How did he so change fast? his clothes? <laughs> um, one of my favorite Billy Zane movies, and you all should watch it because it's an Australian film with Sam Neill and Nicole Kidman and Billy Zane, and it's literally just those three. And it's a thriller. It's awesome. What's it called? called? Dead Calm. Dead Calm. Sounds amazing. Talking about thrillers that have small, small casts. Have you ever seen Buried with uh, (gasps) Ryan Reynolds? I need to so badly. So it's literally, so the whole premise is Ryan Reynolds gets buried alive in a casket. And it's all about him trying to escape for an hour and a half. It's just called Buried? Buried is what it's called. And it's fantastic. I can't, it's, it's. For a movie that's based around one character, you sing one dude for an hour and a half, it's it's great. Stephen King, I I've always appreciated his small cast in his books. The movie's always overcast, like they add people that sure. Um, like if you think about The Shining, it's mostly three or four people. Right, right. They have the very beginning, and then it's mostly just uh, Scatman Carruthers has his distant thing. But other than that, and then uh, Misery, it's only three people. Right. Um. But, you know, uh, so his new movie that just came out like last week, uh-huh. uh, that's on Netflix, is like a two-person cast. What is it? Uh, I I know the oh. premise. <laughs> <laughs> it's Arnold. <laughs> it's Arnold uh, Schwarzenegger. <laughs> uh, no, the whole premise is this woman <laughs> and her husband or lover or something like that uh, have uh, sex, right? And they do like, like you do. sounds good. They have so, but, the sex. So you. they have the sex. She's chained up, like she tie or he ties her up uh, with like handcuffs to the the bedposts, right? Oh yeah, yeah. I so and the true. whole the whole idea is that during sex he dies, and nobody knows where they are. And she's handcuffed to the bed oh. next to a dead body. Wow, that's with freaky. alone with him and her thoughts. Yeah. You just think about What's it. it called? I don't remember. Oh, okay. I uh, I, yeah, can, I it, saw that trailer we'll too, it. and it, just, it freaked just came me out. out. So. What's the new one we were kind of like discussing? Did you maybe you talked about it last time, last podcast? But Criminal Criminal Minds is that what's the one? That's Mind called? Hunter. Mind Hunter. So Mind Hunter uh, is the new David Fincher TV show that's mm-hmm. on I can't Netflix. Wait. Oh, it looks so good. So on that subject, trailer talk. Yeah, let's do trailer talk. I think I think uh, we've got some trailers that we all brought to the table. Something that we're oh, really yeah. intrigued by. Uh, who wants to start mm. this up? Should we play a little bit? of Rochambeau. The trailer that I was really excited about that I've seen a couple times now is for Mark Felt, the man who brought down the White House. Sorry, yes. Mark Felt, colon, colon, the man who brought down the White House. Yes. Um, really long title, but it looks like a good movie. It anyway. looks fantastic. Mark uh, Felt, colon, brought down the White House? <laughs> 
<laughs> that's it's true. When he said that the first time, it's I was true. like, it's like some butt jokes, man. <laughs> and then we went straight into that conversation when we were talking about this earlier, straight into talking about butt plugs uh, <laughs> yeah. on Fifty Shades of Grey. And I was like, that is like the perfect like CQ. segue. Yeah. Well, yeah. And the fact that uh, that his nickname, nickname is Deep Throat. Throat. Yeah. But I, it does, it looks great. It I've does. always been fascinated with Watergate. Yeah. So, yeah. Look, so, it's Liam Neeson, Liam but it's Neeson. not, it doesn't look like Liam Neeson. He looks different. Yeah. Which like is I, good. It's going to be really refreshing to see him in something. Yeah, like a bit yeah. Different. I think so too. And yeah. I'm excited to see Michael C. Hall in a movie because I, yes. I haven't before. Oh. Um, I talked about this a little bit, but there was a, there's been a few movies where he's been in uh, where he's played kind of a villainous character, but this one he looks like he's kind of the hero of this story, which is going to be kind of or nice at least a, an impartial observer, maybe. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah, it's I'm excited such a different for that character movie too. for him. I'm excited for that movie. I think it looks awesome. It looks intense and I mean and based on a true story mm-hmm. and it it's got all the trappings of a terrific movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for cool. sure. I bet. Oh yeah, he also Liam Neeson kind of looks like the smoking man from uh, X Files. Yeah. <laughs> which is kind of like I saw that and I was like, that's not a Liam Neeson. That's a smoking <laughs> man. It's a smoking guy. I, I wonder, do you know was was Mark Felt um was he Irish? Because because uh, no it looked idea. like it looked like Liam Neeson was just using his normal voice, and that was interesting. I don't know as well. that. I don't know. Interesting. Mm. We well, see. find out. We we most certainly will. <laughs> Joel, yes, uh, I. Uh, this is a little different since we've been talking about horror films, but I'm excited about a movie called Lady Bird. Yeah, we talked about this. Yeah, we but it never it never aired. No, we yeah. we cut it because we did the, we tried to do this segment a few weeks back and it wasn't working. It out. was bad. So anyway, <laughs> let's be real here. We cut it out. So With now we're talking me. about Lady Bird, um, and it's it looks really great. Um, have you seen the trailer? No, I know that Michael and CJ saw it because we all watched it. But um, it's it's about a young girl, a teenage girl, um, graduating, getting ready for college that age, and. It's got a it from what I can tell from the trailer. It's got a lot of funny bits, but it's also got a shit ton of heart. It looks like uh, the the new Juno. It, I was gonna say it's a lot like Juno. Yeah. Okay. Um. And another reason I'm super excited is because Laurie Metcalf plays the mother. Laurie Metcalf, my favorite actress in the entire universe. I swear to God, he has not mentioned that before. <laughs> Never once. And you say it the I same way every single time. Is that a bit? Laurie Metcalf. No, I I just, so. it's is that not a bit. <laughs> is that a bit? I just That's have to bot. say it. But um. But she is, and it it just looks really funny. Um, go go check out that uh, that trailer, Lady Bird, and it, it's just the, being that age and confused. Um, most of us can relate to that, not knowing what the hell we want, thinking we want certain things when we actually don't, just to be sort of you know borderline rebellious or just whatever. So, yeah, it looks great. I can't wait for it. Mine. We talked about Mindhunter, which I'm super stoked for. Mm-hmm. But I also, I'm really intrigued by Annihilation. I just showed you guys this trailer beforehand. Yeah, yeah. So the whole premise of this movie is they get, uh, there, like, some, like, weird thing happens to this world. It's based off a book. Um, this thing, weird thing happens to the world where this section of this world becomes, like, a weird, like, painting world. Like, like people become plants and uh, deer grow flowers on their antlers and it's just like this strange world and it just looks intriguing and yeah. it's done by the guy who did ex uh ex machina Ma- machina ex machina ex- <laughs> which was ex- an machina, excellent film which is great you completely like different ways oh, i yeah. love it yeah. oh it's one of my it's one of my favorites of the the year ex machina i wonder and if joel would like it and at the end i've never I really... even heard of it so it's the whole premise of that film. i saw it in the theater i thought it was yeah i saw it in the theater totally too. unique and very bizarre but awesome so i've never even heard of so it. the whole premise is this guy gets wins this competition by his work it's like pretty much like google think of it like google right he wins a competition by google to go talk to the the lead developer of google right um who's developing okay. an ai and the whole premise is uh to have this guy decide if this ai passes the turing test okay so he meets this this robot woman uh, and you know, that's where it starts. And I'm not okay. gonna. I, I want to show you a trailer after we're done here. Yeah. And then you'll be like, "Holy fuck, this movie yeah. looks incredible." Okay. It, it really is. It's yeah. got a lot of incredible twists and turns, and it's uh, the soundtrack is. Oh, 
Yeah. So good. Okay. And the and the out. landscaping. I mean, like the the developer is, is an eccentric dude who lives way out in this mountain range and he owns all of the land. Oh yeah. Like okay. yeah. It's, it's Oscar Isaac. It's uh it's one of the Weasley brothers. It's Bill uh is the is the lead male. It's the uh, red haired one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I okay. Yeah, you I, fell for that. I, I did fall for it. You did. I, I fell for. <laughs> I fell for your bit. For his bat. bat. Yeah, bat, um, bat. <laughs> um, Go back to Annihilation, though. Go back. To- <laughs> but it looks. It looks so intriguing. That film. It's Natalie Portman. It's Oscar Isaac again. It's the same director. So mm-hmm. why not use Oscar Isaac in everything that you do? He's a great actor. Why not? And so is Natalie Portman. She is great. Yeah. Yeah. Even just looking at it on your phone. Like the colors, it's just so. I love it's like so, beautiful. Like, it sucks films. you in. Yeah. yeah, I love films. That it looks just, like bubbles. Yeah, that have so much bubbles. color to it. Uh, <laughs> I'm excited for uh, Gotti. Is that how you say it? Go- uh, Gotti with uh, oh, it's Gotti. Oh yeah, Gotti with, with uh, Travol- Travolta. With About John Gotti. Travolta. Yes. Oh yes. Yeah, Travolta um, looks really Travolta. good in that. <laughs> Man, Travolta. I'm not the one mispronouncing things. I feel things like now. I've caught like the second half or the first quarter of that, but I haven't seen the whole trailer. Here's the thing. Okay. I <laughs> here's the thing. Here's the thing. I like uh, gangster movies. One of my favorite yeah. gangster movies is American Gangster, which is kind of a uh, uh, with Johnny Depp, right? No, no, I'm thinking of. I, it's just, uh, it's a biopic, I think, yeah. about how he rose because he was an, an enforcer. And Travolta plays him. Yeah. Oh. Okay. And he and the CGI looks good and the makeup looks good because Travolta's getting up there. I just watched this really bad movie <laughs> called The Rat. Yes, I wanted you to... <laughs> today. Today, in fact, point of fact, it Girl. was made and, last year. I yeah. had never heard of it. And uh, uh, the guy from um, what's his name? I just had it. It's the guy from. Uh, SVU that was on it for many many years. Oh, uh, Vincent D'Onofrio. <laughs> no, that's a uh, criminal intent. Shit. Belzer, <laughs> Richard Belzer. No. Fail. It's the other guy. It's Benson's detective Benson and Stabler. He's Stabler. He's um. I know who you're talking about, but I don't. He's know the his Italian name. dude. I don't know his name, but I know who you're talking about. Everybody yeah. needs a drink. Anyway, so uh, yeah, it looks good. That's what I'm excited for. I'm yeah. also excited for Thor Ragnarok. Ooh yeah. As well as the the Justice League. Short hair Thor. So, I'm that excited. was a really high pitched noise that came out of my mouth when I was about to say so. Um, so, Thor Ragnarok. Yeah. I keep talking about how I dislike uh, Marvel films, and I'm kind of done watching Marvel you films. You are, yeah. Um, totally burnt out. But holy shit, that movie looks fantastic. It looks gorgeous. Like all the everything, all the shots. Right. Seeing, uh, seeing uh, Hulk like jump and try to kill like a giant flaming god. Yeah. It just looks so good. And he's talking. He's, he's he has dialogue. Yeah. Hulk's talking. Ooh, talks to him. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Hulk no, talks. Sense. He does in the, yeah. the comic. I don't like that. Well, and I and I, I, I was, I I was like reading that. up on on Screen Riot or Screen Rant, sorry, um, about all the 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 huge grab bag of powers that the Hulk has developed over the years mm-hmm. in the comics. It's really interesting. Like at one point they say, "Oh, he can actually punch holes in dimensions, so he can, yeah. he can go to alternate universes by punching hard enough." You know. Well, if you if he jumps hard enough, he can actually leap continents. You mm-hmm. know. Just... Yeah, and that's and then like no one could beat up the hulk no right there was uh there was a comic book uh the marvel versus zombies where all the it's actually links with uh ash versus the evil dead sure um so ash gets sucked into the marvel universe and brings in zombies oh my starts affecting all the different like marvel characters so there's like a spider-man zombie there's like a captain america zombie. that's amazing the hulk uh becomes a zombie but he also gains the ability that when he eats other heroes he gains their powers what Shut he's, so he's, he's kirby rogue. so he and becomes <laughs> yeah. you win you win kirby yeah he went he becomes he, he becomes kirby he starts eating all the other superheroes and he becomes like ultimate power hulk because he eats all the other superheroes. oh my gosh so so hulk That's, with he, spider-man wolverine all he eats the... like galactus and stuff Stop like that oh like my the gosh. world eater too which is just that's also like Jeepers Creepers. When he starts to go deaf, he just eats somebody's ears and then he can hear again. Mm-hmm. Which that and third that. movie and, got the worst. And movies. that was kind of the premise with, the, with heroes as well. Really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, Siler, yeah. I mean, he, I, he, he went back to like some sort of ancient tribal ritual where the, the leaders would, would eat the brains of, 
of their enemies to gain their power. Sure. And he found out that he actually could gain people's powers by eating their brain. That was, Interesting. Yeah. I feel like that was Hannibal Lecter's idea, too. <laughs> Possibly. Hello, but maybe just because he was hungry. I don't know. Yeah, that's true. Because, you know. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, have, uh, have, you guys, have you guys ever eaten human brain? You yeah. know, um, yeah, I, know I you had eat... that for breakfast, and I'm still kind of full. <laughs> <laughs> and you're still full. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. It fills you up. Full of yeah. knowledge. It expands yeah. in your belly. Charles is like, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. Human brain. You know, I, I highly recommend it. It is I do, so choice. You know, I Definitely didn't really like, wash it what down. was it? It was Hannibal. That was the sequel to Science of the Lamps. Mm, One of my favorite yeah. scenes in that is when Ray Liotta has his head. Is eating oh, his own brain. Uh, I love that. I love that. But the uh, Julianne Moore is not as good. As no. She's not a Jodie Foster. She's Jodie she, Foster. she was, she's good. I she like Julianne fun. Moore she a lot. Fun. Those were big shoes, though. And uh, she did not. Like, just clown didn't work shoes. out. It just didn't work so out. So those... Uh, For me. Right. 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 Originally, right. the first movie that came out was called uh, Manhunter. Yes. yes. Manhunter. We saw that. We yes. watched that. Brian Cox was the original. Uh, yeah. And he was really scary. Yeah. And then the lead uh, detective in that was actually the lead guy in CSI. Graham Grissom. Yeah. Graham Grissom. Um, but it had nothing much to do with Hannibal Lecter, which mm-hmm. is very interesting. Because yeah. hmm. Red Dragon has more to do, but... He is just a secondary character yeah. in that story. Yep, because most of it is about the um, the Ray Fiennes character. Yep the the tooth the tooth fairy. Yeah, the, tooth the fairy. Silence of the Lamb story. Well, first of all, the movie's so great, and I think that story was better. I've I've read all the books. I think that's the best story. I mean, they're all great, but that's the most interesting and the most which is that's involved. why that's why I'm kind of it made the best movie for me. Too. That's why I'm yeah. frustrated that the TV show ended at Red Dragon um, because they could have explored um, the Silence of the Lamb side of things, and that would have been really, really good. I don't know if you guys ever watched the Hannibal TV show. Yeah. No, I so did Hannibal. So good. Are Hannibal and Red it. Dragon like prequels to Silence of the Lambs? Then? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Red I Dragon. Didn't, is, I didn't yeah. like it. I don't Hannibal t- is a sequel. I absolutely love the Hannibal TV show. Hannibal is a sequel to Silence of the Lambs. Okay, so it goes. So I think it Red, Red Dragon, Dragon, Silence of the Lambs, Hannibal. And if you're doing movies, if you're Hannibal Rising. Did you see that? It was not good. It was not good. But it, that was the the story of uh, Hannibal growing up. How Hannibal he Rising. got to the point where he was a cannibal and all that. I stuff. didn't like Hannibal the TV show, and I'll tell you why. I could not understand a word he said. Mads, Mads Mikkelsen? As Hannibal Lecter. I couldn't understand him. Like, I literally couldn't understand what he was saying. And it made the show hard to watch. Mm, I, I did I, not I, like the way he I talked. didn't have that problem, and I love... It's funny because I've known a lot of people that have said that. Yeah, and it's just I I think it's one of the best shows on television. It's like one of the most stunning like it, it the the food porn in that in that movie <laughs> or that TV show. No, seriously, like food porn. It's it's gorgeous shots of like mm-hmm. delicious like weird. I do food remember that. that yeah, and it's I I love it. But I watched a few. I really wanted to like it a lot, and I watched three or four episodes, and I was like, I can't watch this anymore. I I can't. It's too hard to watch. Do you like movies where there's thick accents like that? It depends. Um, there's me. this movie called Legend with Tom Hardy where he plays the he plays these real life twins, and I had to yeah, watch I it with s- subtitles because the the English accent was so thick. And and then also Peaky Blinders. Have you ever watched that? Yes, I have not. It is a. You told me about it's this. It's organized crime in England. It was mm-hmm. like it's awesome. Anyway. Hmm. Uh. Talking about Tom Hardy and not being able to understand him, in the original uh, uh, Dark Knight Rises, they had to redub all of his dialogue because nobody could understand what he was saying. In like the trailer and stuff like that they released, it was just like, Hello, Bobo. <laughs> ben, I have a spade. I'm here to get you, Batman. Gap I'm here to get Gap you. Is yours. That sounds like we had Michael Winslow on the phone last week. We, uh, oh, yeah. Sounds like the same voice. <laughs> I, I feel like that movie. <laughs> I feel like everything was rooted in in reality with the first two, and then Dark Knight Rises happened, and I was like, "There's no way 
There's no way they would have siphoned off an island and then that would have been okay with everybody. Like, right, I, like, right. There was so much unbelievability about Dark Knight Rises. Absolutely. Be nuts. Right? I think and they he were... broke his back and he was like, ah, I'm dead. Oh, no, I'm better Here now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and I don't have any cartilage in my knees, it's but fine. I'm there's, still there's okay a lot of, because a lot I have a magic like, knee brace. There's like, theories behind how he was able to hear, heal himself, but it's like, all right, yeah, theories are great and all, like, thinking that where he was at <laughs> was actually, like, the uh, whatever... Lazarus Pit. No, that was the Lazarus Pit, right? Yeah, That's what was. they called it. So it was just like, like where like the jail was called, like the Lazarus Pit or something like that, mm-hmm. which is like the thing that that Raj, uh, Rachel Ghoul used to uh, heal himself. Yeah. You know, in the there were more than like one of them, but yeah, yeah. So, so saying that, oh, that's the case, and then not really like hint at that in the storyline. Y- y- it doesn't work. I'm sorry, it doesn't. You can't you can't think that people are going to be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna connect two and two. You have to say, <laughs> well, then this is the thing. I mean, if you if you leave it ambiguous and have things that aren't, you know, connected to the real world and not explain it, people aren't gonna understand. Um, yeah, and I think sorry. No, you go. I think it had the same problem as Spider Man three, as Suicide Squad. It was just so freaking busy with characters. I mean. They're like, oh, Catwoman, oh, Bane, oh, this. And, like, let's try to tie up all these loose ends and yeah. introduce Robin by the end. And it's like, what the hell is happening anymore? Fighting off more than they can chew. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You, you stick with one thing. I mean, Suicide Squad would have been so much better if they had started with just a Joker Harley movie and then mm-hmm. led into Suicide Squad. Then you would actually learn about these other characters and give a crap about so them. So if, if uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt was Robin... But they wasn't his like middle name Robin or something. Like yeah, that? his middle name was Robin. So, so another another reason why you know how you know how Batman tries to hide his identity. <laughs> yeah, you have this guy who's like, <laughs> I'm the superhero Robin. What's your middle name? Robin. <laughs> ah. Or maybe it was this. So, well, Robin's my middle name. Like danger is my middle yeah. name. <laughs> is, Bruce, is Bruce Wayne's full name is Bruce Batman Wayne, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's just tradition. <laughs> Lord, um, uh, man you know, we, you is, should yeah. you should be a superhero and call yourself Joseph. <laughs> <laughs> and have so an amazing technical dream coat. That's what I was just about to say. <laughs> oh, theater geeks! <laughs> I want to finalize the drinking game rules because yeah. we never discussed this. And I, I've, I've had it, and I've uh, got to give it to everybody. So if you want to play at home and have a cocktail or a beer Cock. or a glass of wine, cocktail. you can take a drink every time one of these things happens. One of Yes. So we have our uh, – anytime we have a – anytime we preface a statement as in, here's what I think about that, or what I want to say is – Here's the thing. Can I just say – Can I just say – This yes. is what I think. So anytime we – Preface a statement, take a drink. Uh, when anyone does an impression of an actor or anybody else, <laughs> take a drink. Anytime there's a pun, we had sound effects. Anytime we make sound effects. We make, we, we, oh, by the way, we were going to, yeah. Yeah. That was good. That was, that was, that was good. nice. Was, was that, that BB-8? No, that no, was an impression a, and a sound no, effect. It's, it's, the, it's the bleeps, the sweeps, and the creeps. Oh, okay. But, <laughs> the, but so if somebody does a... The, <laughs> like so is that a sound effect and an impression of r2d2 just a sound effect because i don't know I mean, I mean you could there could be double things like that yeah, we'll, double leave, drink. we'll leave the viewers up to that themselves fair enough um i felt like adding uh well the one we also when we talked about was or or anytime we say or uh take a drink um but I kind of want to add my Laurie Metcalf thing because I feel like I've said it every episode. Absolutely. <laughs> um, we had the not shot, which is if you don't think the movie sound that we make up sounds like something you'd watch, you take a shot. <laughs> you have to get your not shot in. The not shot. Not shot. Um, and then the other shot was going to be um, if the challenger the stumps six, yeah. the six degrees game because we haven't we haven't been stumped too many times yeah. as a as a collective. So. so those are the ones we came up with. Add the ones that you think we didn't have on there that you liked. And write to us if you have any other good ones for us and let us know. And we can all get get blitzed. That was a great story. Let's get blitzed. But yeah, so do you guys want to make a movie? I So bad. What kind of a movie do you guys want to make this week? 
Well, I mean, it's getting closer to Halloween, but we we don't have to make a, a horror film. We we could. Uh, oh, I think I think it should be Halloween themed. I think we should have a Halloween themed movie. It doesn't have to be a scary movie. You know what? Let's okay. say not a scary movie. We already did a rom com trailer. Halloween theme. Yeah. So let's... how about? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I mean, we could do a uh, a musical. There aren't a whole lot of musicals about Halloween. Yeah, about Halloween. Halloween. Well, we kind of did. There's Besides... the one that literally says, "This is Halloween. This is Halloween," <laughs> in the song. <laughs> yes, and then there's Hocus Pocus, which there's only one song in. And can you think Two of songs. any other ones? Two songs. Come, little children. Uh, I was going to say, <laughs> if we took people from horror films that are known for their horror roles, horror. Robert England, okay. Linda Blair, and put them in a non-scary movie. Oh, yes. my that's God. Great. That's a great idea. Holy shit. This is great. That's awesome. Wow, I'm glad you guys Sorry, like I that. screamed right to the microphone. That's okay. So, okay, so this is a romantic comedy. Yes, yes, yes. With a bunch of, like, horror okay, stars. Okay, so Robert england has got to be in there. He's Freddy Krueger. Right. Linda Blair was the was uh, uh, the girl from The Exorcist. Okay. Jack Nicholson? J- uh, Jack Nicholson could be in there. I mean, he's done a lot of non-scary things, but he is That's true. quite creepy. Right. Jamie Lee Curtis. Right. Yes. Gotta have her in there. Um, who else? So, so... Um, should we, I'm thinking, should we I get a cast who's the girl from Who's the lady from Exorcist that was in... Uh, oh, Ellen Burstyn. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to be on television. Bruce Campbell has to be in it. Yes. Yeah. Groovy. 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 Okay, so it's a romantic comedy. So Kane Robert, Hodder, who played Jason in several movies, could throw him in there. Robert England is married to... J.B. Lee Curtis. Jamie Lee Curtis. <laughs> and they're, they're going through it. So they're separated. Okay. So we, we start off with them. Uh, we start off with him driving away from the house. Okay. Okay. And then we have. Oh, we got to get Linda, Matt Lillard in there. Linda Blair. Matt Lillard and Linda Blair. Can they be a couple? Well, she's kind of old for him. but They're brother and sister. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. And their whole the whole movie is trying to get mom and dad back together again. Oh, that's their kids. Done. Okay. Done. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Boom. So, so I love I love this idea. Um, and I think we can play it. So are are we allowed to cast people, um, from, uh, from different time periods? Because having Vincent Price in the film, yes, as like a narrator. Let's finish this picture. <laughs> would be so much and fun. And Vincent Bryce. I think, <laughs> I think we should do it. But or is I, Karloff? Like, put Karloff in there? Yeah. I think I think this movie should, at no point, reference Karloff. horror films at all. We should just see, like, all the creepy-looking people. Yeah, and then somebody like, like a horror? Julie Andrews or someone who's wholesome comes and kills everybody at the end. Okay. Maybe. Oh, yes. <laughs> somebody who's never been in a horror movie but before. Then I, I like it also if we do a, a shot of a kid's room, you have like the Chucky doll in the background. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, my gosh. A bunch of just like references and throwbacks. It's yeah. wonderful. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, this is great. I would watch this so cool. Like, like, what's the Carrie prom? You could have like prom. Oh, yeah. Sissy Space. You could have a you could have a shower scene that ends up being yeah. actually romantic. Like yeah. you see the, sh- <laughs> the yes. shadow come up on the on the shower curtain. OK, and so like, hey, I would, honey. Yeah. yeah, I would want Tony Perkins and Janet Lee in but there, too. I, I think that's leaning a little bit too much into the horror genre. I think it just really like having like like subtle references is good. But like you don't want to no do scary, no man. scary stuff. No, yeah. like like pun, like horror puns anything like that it should just be like yeah. hey look at all these horror people who've been in horror movies now they're in a romantic comedy no, they're not <laughs> like we yeah. could make it like a what is it what's the big what's like what are those big ensemble romantic comedy movies like new year's day and love actually love actually yeah that's what i think it should be because mm-hmm. we have all these people to work mm-hmm. with yeah you could have like tom savini just like as like the next door neighbor who's like Hey guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Anthony Hopkins is in it. Ooh. Ooh, uh, yes. Hello, Clarice. <laughs> and he does none of those. <laughs> uh, so what do we call this? What? What? what, what okay. Do Mad we... Love. No, there's already a movie called Mad Love. <laughs> Not Scary Movie 5. How about this? Scary Love. Scary Love. Ooh. I kind of love scary that. love. That's great. There you go. It's all about 
it, it deals with like like very strong emotions and stuff like that. Uh-huh. So like the title makes sense, but it also plays back to the fact that it's it's horror mm-hmm. and fear of everything too, like fear of commitment, uh, fear of having a baby, fear of uh, being alone, fear of being alone. Yep. And Vincent Price. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for listening to the podcast. As always, um, have yourselves a wonderful week. My name is Charles. Oh, wait, oh, hold on. My name is Count Charles <laughs> Joseph Kelly. Oh. Ooh, and I am Michael McPell. <laughs> okay, this is Joel. I don't have another, <laughs> another voice after that. <laughs> And this is Seth. Thanks for having me on. Stay safe. (laughs) (laughs) And and have yourselves a horrible week. (laughs) Good evening. I listen to the children of the night. What music (laughs) they make. (laughs) You just do a fart noise. Okay, good night. Have a good week. Goodbye.